everyone, it's Roger and James here from the What's on Disney Plus podcast. In this week's episode, we're going to be talking about everything that's going to be coming to Disney Plus in November. We'll also be talking about the Walt Disney World, so the Walt Disney Company having a massive restructuring to kind of focus on streaming. We'll also be talking about this week's new releases, including Clouds, Meet the Chimps, and also The Right Stuff. So before we go into any of that, a quick bit of housekeeping. First off, a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to our YouTube channel. We just hit... Just before we went, hit that record, 49,000 subscribers. So that is fantastic. Um, that's great news. And also you can subscribe on the audio platforms. And again, a big thank you to our supporters on Patreon and also on YouTube memberships. So I'm going to do a quick shout out to everybody. And that is a member, Jamie and Mackenzie, who are both new patrons this week. We've also got Joseph, Darren, Lauren, Jacob, Sarah, The Juice, What's on Netflix, Andrew. We've also got on YouTube, Adam. I'm Chantel, Filton, I Got No Name, Russell, Mike, Eddie, Jay, Joshua, Drew, and Sarah. Again, a huge thank you for all of your support. Really makes a difference from just a couple of dollars a month and helps keep the podcasts and everything going along. So again, just a big thank you to everyone for that. Okay, so let's jump into the news. Um, literally last night, we had all of the uh, November list officially announced. I was kind of expecting it. I was is that kind of thing around about the 15th of the month? I know it's coming. I know it's going to drop at some point. I know when it comes in, basically it's drop everything and try and get as many articles and get all the list up and get the video made. And and it all came in. And I'm just checking. Yeah, there it is. And this week I did get a new puppy. So she has been kind of keeping me busy. Um, I've never taken so long to edit um, the, the monthly video. <laughs> I don't know. She was like, I know you're doing something. So I'm going to keep biting your toes until you pay attention to me. So she's, um, she's just by my feet. So if she, if I do jump, then you know why. Um, so let's jump into what's been announced for um, November. So first off, let's start off with Friday, the 6th of November. We have got, and I'm going to go with this first off. We've got Mandalorian episodes dropping every week going through there um and then we're going to be having on that day we'll have the second to last episode of the magic of disney's animal kingdom followed by the finale of weird but true then we're going to have episode six of the right stuff and then the sort of the uh, one day at disney short we're going to have a few of them the good news is we do get the finale as well this month. We do get the finale of One Day at Disney. I was like, I was like when it came up on the on the list, it's like season finale. It's like, you know how many times I have to say the word and a One Day at Disney show. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so much. And then from there, going into some of the legacy content, we've got uh, Disney Goldie and the Bear seasons one and two, uh, Disney Junior Fancy Nancy Fancy itself season one. I like saying that one there is try and get through that as fast as possible. Mister Magoo. And the Christmas Carol, so two two decent family movies. Christmas Carol, uh, one of my favourites. So, what do you think of the, of that week for releases? Um, other than the Mandalorian and the right stuff, kind of a slow week for me, honestly. Neither, none of the movies that they're releasing. I I know you really like this version of the Christmas Carol. I yeah, this is this is probably my least favorite version of the Christmas Carol, honestly, but. Uh, Jim Carrey is good in it. Uh, I don't see myself watching it though. When we've got the Muppets Christmas Carol, which is infinitely superior. Um, yeah, fan, I, I, fancy Nancy Goldie and the Bear. I mean, this is yeah. this is not my week. No, it's not your week. Um, we've also going to be getting the following week on Friday the thirteenth. We'll be getting um, again another episode of The Mandalorian, the finale of Magic Earth Animals Kingdom. We're then going to have a new episode of The Right Stuff. Uh, one day at Disney Short. And then get a brand new documentary series, Inside Pixar. We don't really know too much about that one yet. Other than it's an inside look at the people and the people and the culture and the artistry behind the Pixar animated studios. I'm sure we'll learn about that probably as we get closer to that one being released. Um, Petra, City of Riches, and also Ultimate Viking Sword, which I think was supposed to come this month. So I don't know why... Um, this happens quite a few times with releases. They get pushed back. I think that's actually good timing because that's going to arrive the same week as the new Assassin's Creed Valhalla video game. So that could be interesting. Could um, be. Anything there, John Pat? Uh, the Ultimate Viking Sword and Petra are both uh, ones that I'm interested in, honestly. Mm. They, they look like good documentaries. And Star Wars and the right stuff. I, yes. I feel this is going to be an underlying theme. Yeah, I, I, it's funny because a lot of uh, there's been quite a few comments and stuff of people going, "Oh, where is everything? There's nothing here." And I'm going, "Well, the right stuff and like the Mandalorian are two really good 
live action series. You know, that I think that's strong enough on its own for November because a lot of people kind of go, "Where's Wonder Vision? Where's Wonder Vision?" Like because it wasn't announced in this list. Now that could be that they they want to hold that off for a special. They wouldn't necessarily release it in this um, screen. My little puppy I think we had a decided. cameo there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She did decide then that she's just going to um, start chewing on my X Men action figure, which I yeah. was expecting, which is why I left them on the bottom level. Um, so from there, moving on, we had. Um, let's see where we were. So uh, we 17th. Were after, yeah, we're uh, gonna, that, this week's going to be a bit. This, that week's going to be a bit weird because on Tuesday, the 17th, we're getting the new Lego Star Wars Holiday Special. And they did announce that um, Kelly Marie Tran, also Billy. Uh, D. Williams and Anthony Daniels are doing the voice for their characters in that, which is great. It's always nice to see that when that happens and kind of connecting it. So we're getting that on on life. Was it life day? Yeah, life day, which is interesting. So I, I, I'm looking forward to this. I love the Lego Star Wars video games, so I'm kind of know what I'm going to be getting from that one. And I think this is a really good um, thing for Christmas and kind of that t- time of the year. I'm looking forward to it. It's probably the only time you'll get to say you're looking forward to the Legos. Uh, sorry, to the Star Wars holiday special. Just add the Lego to the front yeah. of it. I'm glad that they got several of the voice actors back, uh, especially Kelly Marie Tran, actually, because she got a lot of abuse sent her way after Last Jedi. And uh, I can't even remember the, the name of the ninth movie. Skywalker something yeah. or something. Um, which I didn't think she deserved at all. And so I'm glad that she's still... Uh, hanging out with the Star Wars group. And yeah, yeah. The, I, mean, I hope that people also watch this and they go and check out the other Lego Star Wars content that's available on there. Because there's a lot of really good Lego Star Wars um, shorts. There's the Freemaker Saga. There's a lot. I have that too. It's not sitting here with me, but yeah. yeah. Well, I was just going to say, I, I just here's one I prepared earlier. This is the um, Advent calendar. I haven't opened it yet. I'm actually going to keep it back. I might do it as stories or something like that on, on in December. Yep. Oh, that, that's for the people yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah, that's listening. This is the Lego uh, cal- uh, Advent calendar. So each one's going to have different figures. And then there's some characters in here that the designs are from the new. Sh- um, well, I say so. It's not even a short. It's from the, um, the new series, so you're gonna have the different characters in their outfits. Like Darth Vader's got a Christmas jumper on, and you also get the code to play the game in uh, in the video game that's gonna be coming out next year. So that's that was a nice little thing. So that's gonna be something that we're gonna be looking forward to. Moving on from there, the next day we're then gonna be it's Mickey Mouse's birthday, so we're gonna get um, two of the Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse episodes. We're gonna be getting two of them. Um, they are going to be um, Supermarket Scramble and the Cheese Wranglers. And like, I like it when they do like midweek drops, especially for special days. I always think that's a, that's a cool little thing. Um, from there as well, moving on from Friday the 20th. Um, are you interested in that new wonderful world of Mickey Mouse? I, I am, actually. Uh, the one thing I'm curious about, did they announce how long these episodes are? Um, I'm, I'm guessing there's only 10. They are, they are short, so, um, which is probably about right. I mean, I don't think a 20-minute Mickey Mouse. Right. Yeah, so I think that would be right. Yeah, and you know, based on the art style and stuff, it, this is really just a continuation of the Mickey Mouse uh, program that's been running the last couple of years on YouTube and, and so forth. And those are only like five or six minute episodes. So that's kind of what I'm expecting here. That said, uh, looking forward, they are weird. They are very weird, and I'm expecting these to be weird too. Yeah, it's, uh, I think it's definitely a good one. Uh, moving on from there, we've got Star Wars The Mandalorian dropping uh, on Friday the 20th, along with the finale of The Right Stuff, and then the finale of A One Day at Disney. And then we're going to be getting a brand new series called Marvel 616, um, which is going to be exploring the rich legacy of the pioneering characters, creators, and storytelling that reflects the world outside your window. Each documentary is helmed by a different filmmaker, so we'll be getting the host season then. We'll also be getting a new documentary. About, it's about a two-hour documentary called The Real Right Stuff, which is going to be telling us the history. Now, I'm going to, I'm, the minute they announced this, I knew you were going to love this. Um, of course. When this come in. And I'm going to... Um, I'm obviously into the third episode of The Right Stuff. Now, I actually... I think by the time of it, I'm going to be wanting to watch this because I want to know what the differences are, where they took some liberties. Um, well, so I'm really looking forward to this one. That and this is actually the first time I've read the descriptions of the the regular Right Stuff episodes. Mm-hmm. So it looks like they're ending the Right Stuff after only the first flight. Uh, and that's in the descriptions on here. Yeah. So I'm I hope the documentary actually talks about all 
uh, six of the flights that that end up happening. And well, I I, I do you remember last year when they were kind of announced a series that they had had plans to do the kind of to keep this going and i'm really hoping that people watch it on disney i'm just kind of saying everyone, please watch it because i want more of this this is the you know we, well what... from what i recall of them saying that was not necessarily that they would continue to do the flights of the mercury program but they would move on to the second program which is uh project gemini and and then if that was successful move on to project apollo which includes the moon landings and, and things like that uh, but it, I do think it's an interesting choice that they were like, all right, we're going to do the first Mercury flight. And that seems to be basically the cutoff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this documentary should hopefully fill in that gaps for people who are like, well, what happens after the first flight? Yeah. Well, I'll be honest. I, when I saw this come up, I actually decided now it's like, I don't want to Google or cause of that intrigue of me have gone. What well, actually happened? I was like, cause I know they're out there. Obviously it's a 50, 40 year old bit of history, but I'm like, I want to know what's happened. So it's like this documentary. I'm really, I, I'm really glad they're doing this. Um, this is exactly what we need. To be honest, we, we could do a special episode where I just talk about this for like two hours. <laughs> it might be on the same level as the documentary. We just wouldn't have the footage or the no, audios. I, I, just think it's, I just think this is great. This is exactly what we need more of. Um, so moving yes, on from there, we have got planes and planes fire and rescue dropping in the US. They're already available in some countries as well. And then from Friday, the 27th of November, we'll be getting the fifth episode of The Mandalorian. Then we're going to be getting Black Beauty. Um, which is a brand new Disney Plus original movie, um, which obviously follows uh, Black Beauty. It's a retelling of the classic tale. Um, perfect timing with Thanksgiving and sort of the whole holidays part of it like that. And then from there, we'll be getting two new episodes of The Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse. We're going to be getting two episodes a week from that point on. And then we'll be getting Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Actually, that's not, it's actually quite a fun movie, that one. I don't know if you've seen that one before. I have never seen that one. No, that one, um, I remember, I think it was on, it must have been on Netflix or something, because it was definitely something I didn't rent. It was. It was, must have been on this platform. Um, then we're going to get in The Adventures of Yellow Dog, Far From Home. Um, and then season three of Marvel Spider-Man, Maximum Venom. And then Once Upon a Time in Wonderland. Now, I remember actually watching a few episodes of Once Upon a Time in Wonderland. I did it the wrong way around of where I watched that before I started watching the, the real series because it was on when we were in Walt Disney World and it was like all over the buses everywhere. And you know, that kind of thing. Oh, we're here. We'll, we'll watch it live kind of thing. Um, I, 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 I watched it properly in that I had seen Once Upon a Time you know that had been released up to that point yeah and when they announced that wonderland was canceled after what like eight episodes or or however many i i remember thinking yeah that makes sense this this was not a great spinoff no um and then we're gonna have party animals which is a youtube video kind of thing and then alaska port protection i don't know if we're going to be getting to season one or the three seasons the season three was supposed to last arrive last month and it never did so sometimes this is where um Obviously, with me paying a little bit more attention to the schedule of going, oh, well, hold on, you've announced a couple of these things before and they haven't turned up. So um, good to see that. I think that, I think that we're going to see a little bit more. I think we're going to see a little bit more added to this list. I don't think this is the final list. Um, but I, yeah, there's a few things there that jump out. I mean, the wonderful world of Mickey Mouse, right stuff, Mandalorian. Black Beauty, I like in the fact that we are getting a new Disney Plus original. Um, obviously, Wonder Vision would be great. But I'm still wondering if they're going to hold off a little bit more for, for December for that one, for the Mandalorian I, film. I personally think that they're going to wait until either the Mandalorian finishes or is about to finish because they really want to maximize people holding on to their subscriptions, which means as little overlap between the major tentpole titles. Uh, I would prefer if they just dropped it, honestly, but that's not what I'm expecting. Yeah, and I think we will get the date before November the 12th because when everyone's subscriptions start needing, I think you'll get the, it's coming on December, the whatever, because then that will get people, oh, well, I'll take out a year subscription because I've got, you know, I've got, and then you're going to have Falcon in the Winter Soldier and Loki. So you're going to go, you're going to get the Marvel fans going, well, if I'm going to get all of that in a year, I'll probably get my money's worth. So I think that will be what they will do. So that was it. So there's a, there's a few things there. There was a couple of other interesting things from the point of view of, the UK as well. We've kind of got some information from Digital Spy. We're going to be getting Agents of Shield season seven. We'll be dropping um, throughout November. We're going to be getting two episodes, I think, on the second week, and then an episode a week dropping because it's not aired anywhere over here yet. It's so this is essentially for me. It's a Disney Plus original because it's not available anywhere. 
So I'm really looking forward to seeing season seven. I know you guys have already seen it over there, but um, it won't be on the US for years because it's going to have to go to Netflix first. Um, but yeah, generally as a whole, I think that one was pretty cool. Um, anything else that caught your eye from that month? Uh, not much. I am hoping that they'll announce a couple others, but I don't think it'll be any major titles. We might have something that, that drops uh, on Thanksgiving uh, here in the States, but I wouldn't bank on it either. Like I wouldn't put yeah. place a bet on it. Uh, I think Black Beauty will probably fill that void, but that's actually arriving after Thanksgiving. So when people yeah. wake up from their food comas, they can turn on Disney Plus and mm. uh, watch about a talking horse. Well, it doesn't talk. Does the Black Beauty doesn't talk, I don't think. I don't know. I, there was an article you put up earlier this week where they said uh, that there was a voice actor assigned to the horse. And yeah, maybe, 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 I, like, maybe I misread that. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just one of those things of like how that all works. Sometimes um, maybe like an intro bit at the beginning or, oh, I remember when, not necessarily like a talking horse. You know, that's like, that's like, true. Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so I think, I'd, I, th- I thought November was, was, was pretty solid um i mean for me as well i think getting agents of shield is like okay cool, because there might be some regional differences in terms of some of those movies and tv series not arriving but overall i'm um, pretty good um moving on from there i thought there's been a big reorganization of the Walt disney company this past week um and i thought this was this was massive big news this really kind of got all of disney just kind of well, the stock went flying, everyone went flying up because they announced that they're going to be doing a complete strategic, I should try saying that too quickly, reorganization of its media and entertainment businesses um, so following the rapid success of Disney Plus. And that was, that's in the, literally the second line of like, due to the success of Disney Plus, they will now be putting their company's creative engines together and which will focus on producing content for um, their direct consumer as well as legacy platforms while newly centralized distribution group will oversee commercialization and distribution of all content globally. Um, the same leaders will be, there'll be for now free groups, general entertainment, move studios and sport. Um, so Kareem Daniel has been named the chairman of the media and entertainment distribution group and which will include the company's streaming services, which is being led by Rebecca Campbell. They also announced that on um, December the 10th will be the virtual infest- well, Investors Day, the virtual in... Ow, t- 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 I'll just bit my toe. Um, so there's, <laughs> there's the investor. Yeah. Um, uh, so that'll be coming on December the 10th. Um, great. I think that was good because obviously it was supposed, we'd been reports of it being last week and it went up on a, like a live server thing and um, they ended up, that wasn't the date. So it's been pushed back and they're going to be outlining all the things they're going to be doing with their direct to consumer. I think we're going to have some big stuff to do there, but I'm going to do what we're going to do um, nearer the time. We'll do like a predictions um, episode where we kind of think like we kind of preempt what's going on with that one there. Um, and so, I'm, I'm terrible. At predictions, yeah, I, 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 to me, and I saw Bob Bob Chapek was on like CNBC, and he was talking about um, Disney Plus, and he was talking about um, uh, the success of it and how they want to use it. He did they they did name drop Star because we weren't too sure what was going on with that. They did name drop it and say um, they're going to have that new streaming service. Um, a lot of and this was something I saw on Bloomberg. I haven't got around to write an, um, an article. It's on my to do list for this weekend. Um, talking about the idea of maybe even having like a Hulu hub within Disney Plus, which is what we've been talking about, like with Star. And the idea really, I, I think along the lines of Disney Plus is now the number one outlet. That's the fact they even call things television and studios legacy. Legacy, that's like, okay, you're really putting that on a par now of like, that's not your main concern. Yeah, but they kind of have to as well. Yeah. I mean, the landscape has changed a lot uh, yeah. and they have to adapt. So not really a surprise when you actually sit down and think yeah. about it, but at the same time, kind of a surprise that they made the decision so quickly, relatively mm. speaking. Well, I think it's down to the current coronavirus situation of everything that's going on, of them wanting to kind of, they have to be shown to be going forward and leading forward and, 
pushing, you know, the, the parts, Disneyland is still closed. The theme parks aren't taking in the money. The cruise ships, all four of the Disney cruise ships are currently located in, in France being worked on. So they're not working. Um, if you've seen the, the bay near me, you know, just that the, we've got so many cruise ships parked up from all the different companies because they just can't do anything with them. Um, so that's all done. The studios, there's no, you know, the cinemas, I mean, you know, in the last few weeks, I mean, AMC have said that they are going to run out of money um, over here. The view of so there any opening weekends, uh, Cineworld is closed. You know, there's there's all these kind of things of of things moving back. And suddenly now the cinema is not. They know that 2021 is not going to be a good year for box office, and I suspect 2022 will probably fall in line as well. It's not going to be what it was last year and the year before. It, this is going to and one of the key things I saw from uh, Bob Chapek was where he talked about giving consumers the choice. And, and they said that he, they're voting with their wallets on Disney Plus. And I think they're just, I think, I mean, we, I remember like when they did the Investors Day last year, they talked about being profitable by 2024 when they hit 60 million subscribers. And I suddenly then going, oh, and I suddenly, I was, when I was going through an article and just picking out some quotes and stuff, I was like, hmm, well, if they said that then, are, is Disney Plus now already now starting to, make money if they're already if they, they might not be but it must be getting quite close we'll find out in the financials when it's yeah. released next month but when they were talking about doing it when they hit 60 million 60 to 90 million was their target by 2020 well they're already hitting that so that must have really speeded up what they're thinking with this platform of like it's not maybe losing as much as it, they they thought it was going to there's certainly that i assume that they are still not making money because i'm betting that those projections are you know based on continual money over time uh you know so 60 mil 60 million subscribers now doesn't equal the same amount of money as 60 million subscribers three or four years from now because that's three or four years worth of of monthly and annual fees that they're picking up that haven't yet accumulated but we'll find out more and that, to be honest i hope that's one of those predictions where i'm completely wrong on actually yeah. uh Spoiler for several weeks from now, whenever we do that actual thing, I'll probably be wrong on just about all of them. I just realized I hadn't plugged my laptop in. <laughs> was like, well, Ooh. that would, that would will, be the end of the podcast real fast. Yeah, well, I'll be honest, this morning was one of the things of my new little puppy that I got a couple of days ago, decided to wake me up at half past three this morning. So I've been dozing, so I've already... It's, just about half past seven in the morning so i've already been up for like nearly four hours so i'm <laughs> this is like okay hello <laughs> um so i it, it's not just a case of i've even got a can of coke with me to keep me awake i have got a tea and a bottle of coke to keep me awake um so with that there um i think we are going to see some big changes i think that i can't wait for this investor day because i just feel like we've just had a boost for disney plus and i think this whole thing of star and hulu being hubs within or tiers and extra content coming in they're talking about the prioritization of putting things on there quicker um i think this is i think it's gonna be a really exciting time going forward of where they go and i think just seeing how disney are just have like pipped when i fired up the press release and going okay they pretty much have just kind of said that now the focus of what disney company is now on streaming and they're going oh oh okay that's good news <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's like you're thinking of it right now it's like it's the one thing that's kind of kept investors and everyone happy during covid because it was the one part of their business that was in it but also it's gonna, there's probably going to be some reorganization and stuff going on there i mean i know like comcast and stuff have been doing something similar but yeah i just thought this was fantastic news for for disney plus this is going to mean we're going to get more content better content faster content and a lot more besides right and to be clear, we, we wouldn't expect content on the level of, say, Milan for free, uh, you know, initially released for free, or Black Widow dropping for free. But the, the average should come up. Yeah. Like, the lower tier stuff should have higher budgets. So when they do the, the Secret Society of Second Born, Born Royals 2, they have a higher budget to do the special effects for that, that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, I think it's going to be interesting to see how, how the data is coming in with that um i still think premier access might be a thing anyway i think that might be something that's, that's going to stick around um in just in general because i think we're going to see what kind of what universal are doing with their movies but that's that's for the predictions show we'll do that later um moving on from there from the reorganization a couple of other quick bits and pieces um 
So let's talk now about the the right stuff. There is a that there was you said about got the the documentary. You watched the third episode this week. What did you think of that one? Uh, this is more in line with what I was actually hoping for from the right stuff. I feel like we got more character development, more progress in terms of story than we did in the first two episodes combined. Mm. I really liked the focus on um, mission control and learning about the the stress that they were under. Uh, to the point of hitting volleyballs into each other's faces. And we got to see some of the other astronauts who weren't uh, Gordo Cooper, uh, Alan Shepard, and John Glenn. Even if they forgot to actually tell us who the astronauts were, like um, if I told you a lot of the episode focused on Gus Grissom, would you know which one I was talking about? Was that the, that's the shorter guy that... Yeah, the he's the one who, who tackled yeah. Gordon Cooper into yeah. the pool or got tackled by him. Um, and then there was also a short bit with Scott Carpenter again, though they forgot to actually name. They named his wife, but they forgot yeah. to name Scott Carpenter. Uh, so I thought it was an improvement over uh, the first two episodes. I know that your review was a little bit lower, though. Well, the thing is for me is it was... Um, there was obviously... Uh, to me, it was about... It felt like they were trying to take away and show some vulnerability with both, I think it was uh, Glenn and Cooper, of showing... Mm -hmm that they, they were temptation, there was temptation because they were on their own with, a, you know, and obviously it was a different time and all the rest of it, of what was going on. And, you know, it was that kind of thing. It was kind of interesting seeing them show their weaknesses and, you know, Glenn being very kind of like, he knew it was wrong. He knew it wasn't right. He saw everybody else was doing it, but he couldn't quite go that line. And also in some ways, well, Cooper as well couldn't, um, he didn't want, he didn't, He's obviously because it, it's one of those things of they never really explain what happened with his wife of why he was out on his own. They kind of they they never really there was not really a lot of suggestion of what he did. Um, you know, it was like had he been unfaithful. You know, they, it, that seemed to be the way they were going, but they they were very kind of went around it. So this kind of set that up. So I thought it was interesting how they kind of showed them being weaker. And not mm -hmm. being the kind of and showing Glenn giving him a little bit of um, human taking him away from being the kind of, kind of a Captain America style good boy kind of thing. And I also like the fact of him then taking the mick out of him a bit when they caught him in the car. You know, <laughs> that, I thought that was I thought that was really nice. I thought that was a good little because so, it was that kind of thing. you know you can see I could sit on him and go. You know, you know, what he was doing is like, yeah, no, I, 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 I probably you know he's there and he's practicing it out and he's he's pretending to be in there. And it's like. Yeah, I, you know, he's being, he wants it. He really wants to do it and he wants to do it properly. But of course everyone caught him and then he's just really embarrassed. And I thought, I really enjoyed that scene. I enjoyed that scene too, but it was also mostly because I remember as a six or seven year old being obsessed with the movie, I would sit on the couch <laughs> like that and pretend I was going into space. I didn't do it in the car, but mm. I, I, I connected with Glenn yeah. on that moment where I was like, oh, I did that. Although I did it because I, you know, yeah. loved Glenn and, and Shepard and all these guys. But I agree with you also on the humanizing both yeah. him and Gordo Cooper. Um, even in the movie, John Glenn, pretty much unwavering. He, yeah. he is clean Marine, Dudley Do-Right. Yeah. You know, he, there are no flaws except <laughs> you wouldn't even call it a flaw, but like the, the comedy that comes out of him is trying to act like he, he's yeah. like, yeah, I'll totally curse. I, I just, just wait for it. I'll, I'll drop yeah. an, an F word or something at some point. He, he never does. Mm -hmm. um, so having this moment in the show where they're like, no, he's human. He has the temptation. He, he resists, but he has the temptation just like all the others do. And I think that is an important aspect uh, to all yeah. the characters, honestly. And I also, I also enjoyed watching Alan, you know, he, he was pushing himself and pushing himself and pushing himself to the point where he literally was, in a, he was wrecked. From, and but he got it. He got it to the point where he could do it, and he he, he trained his body. I mean, it's taken some toll on his body. Um, and I just I really that kind of it, it made him a bit more interesting because suddenly then he just you know they really pushed home the whole womanizing thing and him being a bit of a playboy. And this was him like this is why he was one of the best pilots was because he he focuses when he focuses he focuses. And this is what I was talking about last week, where, where I wanted them to show a bit more of this, you know, because mm -hmm. last week we had two episodes and it, all you really get out of it is he thinks he's a really good pilot and he loves women. 
all women. Yeah. Doesn't matter. He, he's going to hit on all of them. This week, you definitely see, oh, no, this is why he got selected for the program. Mm-hmm. You, you can't stop him from wanting to be the best. He is highly competitive. And I, I'll, I'll spoil a little bit of the documentary for you. This actually happened. Um, yeah. Not exactly the way they show it. It, it is a much smaller mm-hmm. time scale. But this actually happened. He he went into the Mastiff, which is that mm-hmm. that giant simulator, and he bailed out really fast. And he felt so humiliated by bailing out that he was yeah. like, "I'm going to master this," yeah. and he did. Yeah, and it's the fact that like to pl- the thing with the hearing as well of like how it affected. You know, that was yeah. that's that's an interesting point that I, I'm kind of surprised they brought up. It's not something that will matter in this exactly. season all that much. But if we get to that hypothetical yeah. second and third season where they do Project Gemini and Apollo, that's actually a major plot point in those, yeah. but not in this season, yeah. which is like, so you, you can see a little bit of forward yeah. thinking. They're like, we want to do another season or two. Yeah, no, I, 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 I'll be honest. I'm really enjoying this series. This is, um, you know, it's like one of those shows where it's literally, I'll say to my wife, uh, write stuff, you know, we sit there and watch it together, which is great. Cause we, we don't tend to do that with a lot of the um, things. Um, it is that kind of thing. I, I have got access to the next two weeks episodes in advance to do reviews. I did this week. I've got, now I'm going to do episode three, do that one. There. Cause in some ways of like, I will do it, get the reviews up a few days before everybody uh, on the website and stuff. But it's like, I don't want to go too far ahead because then I'm going to end up, if I do the podcast, I'm going to like, be, <laughs> yeah, that was, that was like, no, I need to stay on pace with, um, with everyone. So I'm, I'm really looking, I'm really enjoying the series. So, I'm. I think I'm definitely going to be on the cheerleader squad for the next month. Just kind of going, everything right stuff. Watch it. Watch it. Watch it. Um, and really? I'm. Uh, I'm actually trying to convince my parents to do a uh, a Disney watch thing yeah. with them, where I'll, I'll watch uh, some of the right stuff with mm-hmm. them. Because, I mean, we're all separated, and this would be a great yeah. chance for me to to actually try out the Disney watch. Yeah, I actually, I to be honest, I probably should. I should probably set it up on my dad's TV when I go over the other day, so he can watch it because. Um, if we go into a circuit breaker lockdown for a month, uh, that would give my dad something to watch, <laughs> and especially the Mandalorian. Between the Mandalorian and that, I think he'll enjoy them. Um, so I might even I'll set him up a little profile. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, because there's that. There's the thing. There's, there's the, you know, for my parents, like my dad's going to watch two two series. That's all he's going to want. Um, you know, and I know the fact that the TV will have it because it was my own TV. <laughs> um, so there we go. So moving on from there, we also had clouds. Brand new movie. I did put up a video and a written review early in the week, but I want to hear your thoughts on it, thoughts on it first. What did you think of that one? So a little bit mixed. Um, and it's and it very dependent on what part of the movie we're in. Mm-hmm. Um, I will preface this by saying I was unfamiliar with the song Clouds before this. I had heard it once, mm-hmm. like way back, uh, probably around the time it came out. I probably saw it on YouTube because someone forwarded it to me. It was a big yeah. viral sensation. And I remember hating the song, like flat out hating it. Um, I didn't know the story behind it. I didn't know anything about, you know, why it was so popular. Uh, but I really didn't like the song. And what yeah. no, you were going to say something. I was going to say, uh, I'll be honest, I'd never heard of the song until I knew about the movie. And I didn't, I, again, didn't re- when you know the story, the song, the words and stuff. I mean, I'll be honest. I put it, I put it on on the Spotify while I was writing up the review. And I come on, and I literally like wiping away because I just watched the movie like the day before, and I'm like, it really. What he it was one of those really weird things of that the movie kind of really hit home. It was very strong, very well done. Um, my wife does actually work with people with cancer for a job, and so she was telling me, you know, about some of this, you know, that it was very, you know, how it was done was really, and you know, we were both, we got to the end of the movie together and we were both crying away kind of thing. And it was one of those things of going, I remember watching it and going, I got to the end and thought, that was a really good movie. It wouldn't have been a movie I normally would have watched. Things like Fault in the Stars. Um, there's also, I think, You and Me. Is that, I think that's the one. Well, there, there's uh, an entire yeah. subgenre yeah. of very sick teenager fulfilling a final wish yeah. kind of thing. And yeah. I just, I just, I was just really, I just got to the end of it. And I thought that was, I enjoyed that. I enjoyed it a lot. It made me, it made me feel something. And I thought that was the thing of, at the end of the day, that is what these, if that's what it did. And it on multiple occasions, it wasn't just a once, it was on multiple occasions, things that they did and said, um, I was emotional. I was that kind of thing. I got to the end of it. No, I really enjoyed that one. And my wife said it was a really good movie. And it's kind of thing. Around, no, I was like, it was it was something I never would have normally have if that had been on Netflix or anything like that I wouldn't and in some ways 
it's like doing the podcast and the website and stuff it was one of those situations of it makes me watch stuff that I maybe wouldn't normally watch and I said to my wife so we'll watch it together because I tried to do that with the movies and it was like I got to know I really enjoyed that I did, wasn't expecting it I um it is it is that it's definitely quite hard pushing I think for Disney plus I'm really glad they purchased it because I think this was exactly what they needed yeah, it didn't pull punches. It didn't try to make everything pretty and, and happy. And that's the part that I really liked about the movie was not necessarily his story so much. I mean, it's obviously motivational and, and he's he had a very uh, interesting story. But I really liked the aspect of them looking at how it impacted everyone around him. Uh, you know, there's that scene with his mom and his dad sitting on the porch and and you can tell there's just like so much stress between them because mm. the dad doesn't want to deal with what's going yeah. on. And the, the mom is completely stressed out by it and they're having problems. And his youngest sister, you know, he's, he's right at the yeah. end and his youngest sister does not want to go down and see him in yeah. that condition, which I can totally relate to. Uh, definitely was in a similar situation, yeah. not a sibling. Yeah. So not, not yeah. quite on the same level, but I think most people have been in a yeah. situation where they're like, I don't want to see this person in this way and either forcing themselves to, or, or maybe not depending on the person, uh, no judgment either way, honestly. So those aspects to it, the, the, the way it impacted life were really well done. It didn't pull punches. It didn't go too morbid and it didn't try and make it at all pretty and, and yell Kumbaya, despite what the song yeah. sounds like that said the song itself, I, I still was just like, I don't like this song at all. I can appreciate the song. I can appreciate yeah. the story behind it. The, the power of the lyrics for the, the situation, yeah. why it was written that way. I still don't like the song though. And honestly, I didn't like pretty much any of the songs on the soundtrack. Yeah. I mean, I that kind of fit situation like the song, like you say, um, I do think it's a powerful song when you know the story, when you don't know the story, it, but at the same time, it was just like, as a whole, it just, it, I think it worked very well. Um, I know the soundtrack's come out um, and it's just that kind of situation. I think it's just like, I think Disney really pulled themselves and got a good movie here. And I think they should, they, you know, this one and Black Beauty as well, m movies they've purchased from other places. And I think we're going to see a lot more of this. And I think Clouds really is helping push in that thing of, you know, Disney can, Disney Plus can start having some more mature themes. And I thought, and I think Clouds is just like, so we watched that going, yeah, okay, this is this is not because Star Star Girl is like someone come up and said, Oh, it's like like Scar Girl. I'm going, it is no, nothing it's, like Star Girl. It's like this is such such a better movie than that. Because that was so boring boring. Um it's, and it's like, no, this is a really good movie. And I, I can't stress that enough really of like it's not easy, it's not for everybody. Um I don't think yeah, obviously like younger kids and stuff, gonna, but I I think this was definitely gonna be one I think the parents are gonna like. It's, it's definitely something that you can enjoy. If your kids are old enough to understand it or you're prepared to have some tough conversations with your kids, then I think it's fine for that. But you do need to be in the right emotional headspace for it because it will hit you. Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's, not, it's not an easy movie to get through. And it's not, it, it doesn't hammer it. It doesn't really beat it into your head. It does it in a much more subtle way. The, when you get to the end of the movie, you, you don't, actually see the death or anything like that but like we've been on this journey and yeah. wow okay yeah. yeah um i also really like the fact that they they showed a lot of footage of him at the end as a big montage yes. thing and i think that was that was hard hitting also the family have been very involved in making the film you know all the actors were able to have communication and meet up and were with the family for their characters there was i was on a press conference call for the movie and i think it was thomas said about his character that the dad they really wanted the rock to play him but we all want the big name super actors <laughs> I, I you know it's like i'm gonna get dave batista to play me you know, <laughs> you know i could see it yeah exactly um so i just think you know you got all these kind of things you know all the rock i mean i can do it um but other than that um yeah I, I was really impressed with this and if you haven't checked it out put it on your watch list um maybe not necessarily with the smaller ones but this one's a good one for you know i, I think it's a good couple movie actually as well i think it's a good um you know there's it's good catharsis um yeah. it, it's definitely good catharsis it's not 
the movie I would put on at Christmas or Thanksgiving or something yeah. like that because that'll kill the mood real fast. But I do think uh, it is worth watching. Mm-hmm. It, it is good, mature, uh, aimed at adult uh, content on uh, t- uh, yeah, Disney+. T- Plus. Teenage, yeah. it's, teenage it's, uh, yeah. older, uh, people who can emotionally handle it. Yeah. It's not, I don't think I'll ever watch, I don't think I'll watch it again. It's not a movie I'd want to watch again, but I'm really, really glad I've seen it. So from there, let's now move over to Meet the Chimps. What did you, I, <laughs> I watched it. I watched this guy. I, I, well, I got given, like, we, we got review. we only got the first episode uh, to watch and I watched it and I got to the end of it and I'm sat there with, I'm sat there with this, um, the notepad to kind of do it. And I'm going, oh, it was a bit average. It was just like nothing happened, nothing interesting happened. It's kind of like it's like yeah, I see why you dropped the whole season at once. Nothing, there wasn't really any. It wasn't anything new. And um, this year, and I'm going to be straight up honest with everybody. You know, we've had the magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom, which I think is a fine show and probably does it better than this one. We had Secrets of the Zoo, um, which they've recently just a new season over here is launched with the the London one. But also we had Tiger King, right? And while Tiger King, the trouble is, is like, and it's, it's really bad. It's like, I'll sit there, got to the other guy. Yeah, I kind of, I think it's, you know, I remember sitting down to watch Tiger King about a guy that ran a tiger zoo and the entire um, series zoo and just went off on a complete rampage. And then I kind of watched Meet the Chimps and it was like, um, yeah, I, this, this is not a good year for some of <laughs> <laughs> like, I know I should compare the two. They're not got nothing, but on paper, they're they're each other. But well, they're both all. they're both about zoos and sac- they're both about sanctuaries. One's about a an Atlanta tiger one, and one was about chim- and the thing is the one of the chimpanzees. I mean, it's a two hundred, I think it's a two hundred acre site or three hundred acre with two hundred chimps. Three hundred. The either way around, it's a big sanctuary in Louisiana, and they only have like four or five open days a year. And if you want to go and do a tour of the place. It's about five hundred dollars for like a group of six of you. So it's not like a zoo that you can go visit every weekend or very often. And obviously with COVID, they've been shut there. So it's definitely giving you an insight into this kind of um, place. And a lot of and all these chimpanzees have been have been tested on or have been in laboratories. You know, they're really you know. And what they're doing is fantastic. They can't be allowed out in the wild, so they're being put out into big areas where they can have trees and stuff but i didn't think they actually portrayed that i ended up re- finding most of that out from going onto the website of the chip haven place because the see i don't think it really told that very well it didn't give it i don't think it introduced the sanctuary and that it, and i i'll be honest i didn't like jane lynch's narration i really didn't like it it was again it was like well are you going kids or are we going adults where are we like oh it's definitely kid I, yeah, I, yeah. my impression was definitely it was it was they were aiming for a kid audience her her intonation the way she was speaking the even the lines themselves uh they were all very much aimed at, at a younger audience uh i had no problem with her na- narration i do understand where you're coming from uh but given the subject that they were working with given the way they chose to present it i thought she was perfectly fine uh for it uh some of the bits that you mentioned i do remember them talking about very very quickly they they kind of really rushed over the yeah all these chimps were part of research labs and now they're they're not part of research labs and we're never going to talk about it again I'm like okay well that was that was kind of quick but i get it, it this isn't about what happened yeah. to them it's about what's happening to them now uh they had the new enclosure being built they had that um midge getting introduced into to one of the groups and, and things like that yeah. but I kind of the only thing i would have put on that is i would have preferred that maybe in a later i would have preferred the opening episode to be a bit more about where because you know you put them they're all in cages and all the rest because they're obviously in the quarantine zones and i was going was this film during covid or was it before it? i don't know um, and certainly then the, a lot of face masks yeah face masks covers you know <laughs> things that have gone was it film during it? i don't know and then it was like no i think it was just because they were in quarantine and stuff but it would have almost been like felt like it would have been better to show us what it was like inside for all the norm for every for them all in the good bit first and then show them going into it because they were, were just seemed to be a lot of time spent inside of a, inside of indoors and it i don't know it was just an odd one i got to the end of the first episode and was like yeah i don't want to watch the rest it's just it just 
I mean, I might pick up a second episode just to give it a second go um, at some point during the week. But it, 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 I just got to it. It was like, going, we didn't need this with the magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom at the same time. Um, we should, they should agree with. They should have spread them out because it's too, too much of the same. And also, like, I'm not entirely sure of dropping six episodes at once because um, I know, yeah, you might not have come back, but I don't know. If, would you binge? This is not, doesn't feel like a binge show. I stopped at one episode very specifically because it's like, if I binge this, I will get very, very tired of it. But I think watching it once per week, which is what I'm going to plan to do. It's going to be a, like um, a second screen watch. You know, I'll, I'll be working on my main screen and I'll have it up on the side because it, it's very fluff. Uh, and, you know, it's not calling it a documentary is being a bit generous, I think. Yeah, because it, it's this is more like Meerkat Manor that kind yeah. of thing you, you don't really learn much about chimpanzees in general you don't learn much about the sanctuary as you were saying you do learn about these specific chimpanzees you learn about their structure and their hierarchy and why this chimp is being introduced to these chimps and, and stuff like that but my knowledge of, of chimpanzees in general from this like okay they've got a hierarchical hierarchical structure yeah. and that's about it um, yeah. Also, they 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 don't have pants, which is very obvious for a lot of the show. <laughs> I know that's a weird <laughs> a weird thing to say, but I'm trying to say it politely because it's yeah. just like, all right, that's okay. that's a whole lot of chimp right there. <laughs> yeah, I I, th I think it was a, I don't I don't because th I think it was supposed to come out in the summer. And I kind of wish they kind of stretched it out a little bit, got gone to the six episodes, do it a weekly episode, drop it, get but dropping it at the same time as the Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom just didn't feel because i think that's just a, a, a for me that just feels like a more interesting show because not only that but they're going somewhere where i've been but also jumping between the different animals and do, it's you know you watch one episode is about an art park and the next episode is about mandrill whereas six episodes about chips i think six episodes is right i mean i'm glad they didn't go any longer than that but yeah it, it's kind of along the lines of yeah it's a bit of a, a bit of a, a strange place to put it put this one yeah, and I, I fully agree this should not be coming out at the same time as the Secrets of the Animal Kingdom. They, they're way too similar, and if I was going to recommend just one of them, it would be the Secrets yeah. of the Animal Kingdom over this any day of the week. Um, I do think it, it's got potential as a, a background noise show, the kind of thing. you, you mm. I can't concentrate on it because I'm working on something else, but you, you know, get... You catch little glimpses, you can look, oh, they're, they're playing, and then you get back to work kind of deal. Um, it's not a bad show. It's no, just, it's not, yeah. well, it's like, it's what you said right at the beginning. It's average. It's yeah. exceptionally average. Yeah, it doesn't, it's not bad. It's not bad in the slightest. It's a very well-made show, a very well-meaning, lots of good stuff. If you like chimpanzees, check it out. Even I would say check out an check episode out anyway. Out. Yeah, it's a, I mean, that's the thing with Disney+. Plus. Just, just, you know, just try out all the images. It's nice to have all these different things dropping. Um, so anything else you watched this week? Uh, I also watched Hocus Pocus, but we're not going to be talking about that in this episode. No, we're going to be doing a special uh, uh, retro review on that one there. I say retro. I always say these, I'm doing these retro reviews, but I've never seen them, so I don't have the retro side <laughs> of it. But we'll be, um, that'll be going up for patrons and YouTube members tomorrow, because we're going to be recording it right after this. And then everybody else will have access to it next week. And so... And we'll be talking about that one. Um, I'm trying to think what else. I think I watched another episode or two of Once Upon a Time. Mm. I'll be honest. Been as I said, new puppy this week. I've just it's thrown the entire schedule. And, you know, a couple more weeks, and then she'll be kind of thing. Like, like literally, right now she's asleep on my feet, so that's that's good. But um, moving on from there, that's um, just before we head off. I'm just quickly going to run through the trending see what's what people are watching on disney plus so let's just fire up the app and see um it's always kind of i always like this kind of thing of like going what's in there what's changed what's made the big impact from yesterday i'm really i'm kind of hoping as we log in now of what's what's clouds done because i'm really hoping people have gone and watched that one sometimes you just i find that with these shows stuff is going you know it's like i, I, I it's not you don't see people watching going 
come on, guys, this is like, what's up for, you know, stop watching Moana for the 95th well, thousand. Well, there's certainly <laughs> that. I, I will say on my version, as we established last week, we, we have slightly different versions yeah. of the trending. It is not on the trending tab. The right it, stuff did move on to the trending tab here. It and has just, yeah, just fired up on here. And now. since, and since we just mentioned it, Hocus Pocus is in the number four spot on my trending tab right now. Yeah. So at the bottom we've got Cars, and then Star Wars The Clone Wars, Tangled, Bluey, Zootopia, The Haunted Mansion. So I don't know where that, that okay. one's that one's coming. So this is obviously this is based on the US. So then we've got the right stuff. Oh, we got a nice new image art. Oh, I've not seen that poster before. That's kind of quite interesting. And then we've got Puppy Dog Pals. I've got my own little one down here. Uh, we got Toy Story. Clouds has come in. So at the bottom end of the chart, but I'm glad at least hit it. Hopefully people will start watching it. Halloween Town, Phyllis and Ferb, Coco, Toy Story 4, Onward, Frozen, Jesse, Once Upon a Time, The Mandalorian, Frozen 2, The Nightmare Before Christmas, Moana, Hocus Pocus, Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, and The Simpsons. Um, so the Haunted Mansion um, was the one that stood out as one that nice to see the right stuff still getting some views. And also, okay, Hocus Pocus was like number two last week. I mean, that was yeah, quite it's. A... I, I guess in the the very small fight between Halloween themed movies, Hocus Pocus is the one that wins out. Mm. Uh, the Nightmare we'll, Before we'll, Christmas. We'll, we'll talk. We'll, we'll talk. We'll, we'll talk more about that in a bit. But I'm just going to just check and see on the UK have... tab if we have anything different. Um, no, the list order is exactly the same. The only difference is Hamilton and Cars. Look, there's, there's a little, the little did a bit of a difference, I think. Because I, some of the, yeah. I just have to admit that uh, until you mentioned the Haunted Mansion on uh, the trending list, I completely forgot that that was a movie. I know they they they've been talking about a remake, but I forgot that movie existed. I I've never seen it. Uh, so we're not we're not going to do a retro review yeah. of. Haunted Mansion, but I think I will set some time aside and actually watch that one in the near future. It's not dreadful. It's not dreadful. I, 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 I but I love the ride, so that's the thing. I so do love there the ride. We, yeah, so there we go. So that is this week's episode of the What's on Disney Plus podcast. We'll be back next week with um, another episode. Again, just a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed, everyone who helped support the channel. We really just make all of the difference. I'm going to go check us out over at whatsondisneyplus.com. You've got the Facebook group, Twitter, etc. to keep up with everything there. And on that note, guys, thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back soon. Laters.